In your day-to-day -day life, you must have held a 1.2 volt cell like the one I'm holding here. Did you notice that you don't feel anything unusual when you hold the two ends of the cell with your fingers? But at the same time, if this was a battery with large potential difference, you could easily get an electric shock. So, never ever try doing that. But why is it so? In this video, we'll find out exactly why and discover a law in the process. I'm going to conduct a small experiment. Let us take a simple electric circuit with a bulb, cell, switch and wires. Let's add a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across the bulb and an emitter to measure the current through the bulb. First, we'll use only one cell as power supply and switch on the circuit. What is the reading shown in the voltmeter now? It shows 1.2. So, the potential difference across the bulb is 1.2 volts. And what about the emitter? It reads 0.2. So, the current in the circuit is 0.2 ampere. Let's tabulate the observations like this. Now, we'll add another cell and observe the readings. We now have two cells instead of one. So, should the voltage increase two times here? Let's look at the reading now. Yes, it reads 2.4 volts. Twice the initial reading. Now, let's look at the emitter reading. It reads 0.4 ampere. Let's note these down too. If we repeat the steps using three cells, then we get 3.6 volts and 0.6 ampere. And for four cells, we get 0.8 ampere and 4.8 volts. Using these readings, let us find the relation between V and I. And in order to do that, we can plot a graph and find out. So on the x-axis is the potential difference and the current is on the y-axis. Let's take the readings of potential difference and current and plot them one by one on the graph. If we join them, we can see that the graph comes out as a straight line. We've measured the current for different values of voltage now. What if the voltage is zero? That is, a circuit without the cell. What would the current be? Yes, it would be zero. So, the graph should pass through the origin too. Just let's extend the straight line to the origin now. A straight line plot shows that as potential difference increases, the current through the bulb also increases linearly or we can say proportionally. Example, when the voltage doubles up, the current also doubles up. This relationship was discovered by a German scientist Georg Ohm in the year 1827 and this finding is hence known as Ohm's law. The law states that the current flowing between any two points of a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference between the two points. We saw it for the bulb. This is also true for the wire or any other device. Remember, physical conditions such as temperature should not change. If the temperature of the device is not the same in the two measurements, you might see a difference in reading. So, Ohm's law is valid only at constant temperature. We will later discover why. So, we can mathematically express the law like this. I is directly proportional to V. We can also say the reverse, right? That is, V is directly proportional to I. Let's replace the proportionality sign with equality using a constant and call it R. This constant of proportionality R is called the resistance. So, the expression becomes V equals to I R. We can rearrange and write it as I is equal to V upon R. If the input voltage is constant 
and if we increase the resistance what would happen to the current will it increase or decrease yes there is an inverse relation between i and r that is if r increases i will decrease so seems like the resistance opposes the current flow now you understand why is it called resistance so we can say that resistance is a property of a material which opposes the current flow the si unit of electrical resistance is ohm and its symbol is greek letter omega let's go back to our initial question now why don't we get an electric shock with a small cell but do get one from a big battery a cell has lower potential while the battery has a larger potential so the cell produces a small amount of current while a battery produces a large amount of current the large current from the battery gives us an electric shock so now we know what resistance is but why does it arise in a conductor we will answer this question later and develop a better understanding of resistance now let's recap what we've learned in this lesson ohm's law states that current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its ends mathematically v is proportional to i from this we establish the formula v is equal to i r where r is the resistance of the conductor we also learned that the electric resistance is a property of conductor to resist the flow of charges or current its si unit is called ohm and it's denoted by omega i hope you've enjoyed this session we will continue this interesting journey of electricity and i'll see you soon